You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday, the 8th of August, and I'm Will from Milford. Global markets continued to grind higher last week, as any news seems to be good news for investors. The Nasdaq has now rallied nearly 20% off its June lows, while the S&P 500 has rallied 13% and the ASX 200 10%. Much of this rally seems to have been driven by hedge funds and systematic type strategies such as CTAs and vol targeting funds covering short positions. Goldman Sachs' most shorted basket, which tracks the top 50 shorted stocks in the US, has rallied over 30% in the last month. Pre this recent rally, many hedge funds and systematics were positioned very defensively at max short, which means their flows become very one-sided. Now that some of the shorts have been covered, it should allow markets to move more freely in both directions. The RBA raised the cash rate target by 50 basis points to 1.85% last Tuesday in a move widely expected by the market. The statement contained very little new information and perhaps the only thing of significance was a slight lift in the central bank's inflation forecasts. The bank's central forecast is for CPI inflation to be around 7 and 3 quarter percent over 2022, a little over 4% over 23, and around 3% over 2024. This compares with a forecast of 7% in 2022 previously. The central bank also released their statement of monetary policy on Friday, which contains a more detailed set of assumptions the bank uses to make decisions. The bank expects the cash rate will rise to 3% by year end, with the unemployment rate falling to 3.25%. On the growth front, the RBA expects that the GDP growth will grow by 3.25% over 2022, then slowing to grow at 1.7% over the next two years. These growth forecasts are lower than the central bank previously expected. As the RBA continues to raise rates, the flow-on effect to house prices is starting to be noticed. The CoreLogic data released on Monday showed Sydney house prices dropped by 2.2% in July, the sharpest decline in 30 years, while Melbourne fell 1.5% in the month. This shows a trend starting to develop, so it will be watched closely as the market expects further rate hikes to come, which could lead to a further acceleration in house price declines. The Bank of England hiked rates the most in 27 years on Thursday, warning that the new UK Prime Minister faces more than a year of recession. Officials raised the benchmark rate by 50 basis points to 1.75% and said all options are on the table at the next meeting. Governor Andrew Bailey boosted his inflation forecast, seeing a peak of 13.3% in October and outlined plans to sell about £10 billion of bonds a quarter beginning as soon as next month. US non-farm payrolls on Friday continued to show a very strong labour market with large beats to expectations. The unemployment rate fell to 3.5% from 3.6% expected, while the economy added 528,000 new jobs versus a market expectation of 250,000. Hourly earnings also beat, putting pressure on the dovish rhetoric the market has adopted post the recent FOMC meeting. Investors continue to struggle with the tight walk between quickly tightening financial conditions and the possibility of a recession which could cause central banks to slow in their rate hiking cycle. Turning to stock news, IFM increased their stake in toll road operator Atlas Arteria last week, only a week after walking away from takeover talks. ALX and IFM couldn't come to an agreement to progress talks, so this increased stake was a surprise. This takes IFM's holding to 19%, which sets them in a good position to either launch a takeover or push for a board seat. Chemicals company Orica raised $725 million to buy Axis Mine Technology, which provides navigation, data and drilling services for the mining industry. The purchase price of Axis was only $350 million, so this was seen as a fairly large overraise by Orica. The raise was done at $16 a share, which was a 7% discount to where it was trading pre-raise. The market didn't like the deal, perhaps because they were raising so much, with the stock reopening at $15.50 post-raise and continuing to slip lower on Friday. Inflation continues to bite in Australia, and as many people can relate to, rising food prices are one of the areas being most acutely felt. Last week, we got an update on price rises for Woolworths and Coles, which confirmed what people are feeling. Woolies increased prices on over 2,000 of their products and an average increase of 13%, while Coles increased prices on average 12.7%. When averaged across their entire product line, this saw an increase of about 1% on the month. This week we have plenty to focus on. 
both the macro releases and as Australian company reporting season kicks off. Companies to focus on that are reporting include IAG, Telstra, ResMed, CBA, Suncorp and Mervac. Investors will be interested in how companies had fared the last half in the face of rising costs and the slowing consumer, but equally interested in corporates' views on the outlook. On the macro front, the key piece of data the market is waiting for is the US July inflation numbers out on Wednesday night. The market is expecting headline month-on-month CPI growth to be 0.2% versus 1.3% in June, while year-on-year to ease to 8.8% versus 9.1% previously. Annual core inflation, however, is expected to increase slightly to 6.1% from 5.9% prior. A strong month-on-month number would be likely to shake markets, who expect that we are now over the peak in inflation, particularly after the strong non-farm payrolls print last Friday. The US will also receive PPI data later in the week. Thanks for listening. That's all for this week. Have a great week.